are continuing our work here at the Housecore Horror Film Festival. And it brings me such great pleasure to bring you a musician that I've known about for a long, long time. Most people know him from Houston. I have with me the man, the lead guitarist for Phil Anselmo's Illegals, the man, Marzi. How you doing, man? I'm doing great, my brother. It's fucking... Give me a hug. Ah. It's good to see you. Oh, my God. It's Hello, like... Jackson. How long have we known each other? I mean, like... We've known each other, man, for a while, man. Much respect and love to you for what you do, you know? There's, it's all good. There's nothing like the metal community, man. No, no. Nothing. Nothing that's got quite such a heart and so as a metal community. It's a, it's a, you know, it's, it's a long history. I think some, you know, many people in, in Austin and San Antonio feel in the Houston area. But uh, before we talk about you, because, you know, like I, I knew about you way before all of this happened. Back when you were doing, you know, you're still doing your own music, yeah. which we're going to talk about a little bit. Yeah. First, tell me about, I think most people are coming to know the name Marzi now because, though, because of Phil, you're, you're being in Phil's band. How did you first, I mean, how, how did your relationship with Phil on Summer begin? Jeez, man. All right, when Philip first got into Pantera, all right, I'd seen Don Bag play with Vinny and all that in, in Houston when they had Terry with them. When Phil first joined them, their first gig was in Shreveport. I just happened to be in a band called Black Sheep with Bloss from Slaughter, you know, it's crazy. And two young ladies in the band. So two girls who were, we were playing Shreveport, Pantera was playing before us, the night before or something. I was like, I gotta go see Dimebag play, you know? Uh -huh. So I go to see Dimebag play, I didn't know Dimebag at the time. But it was, it happened to be Philip's first gig with them. Wow. And shortly after that in Houston, I'm- Was that before Cowboys from Hell CD? That was right around, right prior to Power Metal. Okay, oh wow, yeah. Yeah, wow. Philip was 18 and uh, I think we were like, or he was, yeah, he was 18, we were like, just night turned 19, so it's like, it was many, many moons ago. And so we befriended each other the same evening. Rumor has it that Don and I knew each other before Philip. We all actually befriended each other on the same night in Houston. Oh, okay. Don and I became very close. Phil and I were close too, but you know, we were guitar players. Right. So I would spend time, I, I three nights one time at the Abbott family house and went and got got the opportunity to check him out at Joe's garage yeah fucking awesome man you know I got to hang out and see some insane video shit that time had made at the time some home video shit he had made funniest guy you've ever met in your life most talented cat I've ever seen and you know I'm mean, being a guitar player I see a lot of fusion cats a lot of jazz cats a lot of blues cats a lot of metal cats and I swear I've never seen a more consistent guitar player than Dimebag have some heavy opinions, oh, you know, and yeah. uh, and uh, some people may disagree, but you know, to me, Johnny Winter and Stevie Ray Vaughan were hands out and both white kids. When I say they were the best blues players that ever lived, what I mean by that is they took in everything and they gave it right back to every right. genre of the blues. So right. to me, they opened me up to everything. If it weren't for you know Stevie and Johnny, I wouldn't have known about Albert and Alvin and this and that, all the Kings and whatnot. Don Bag and Randy Rose to me were, what I mean by that is, I don't, you're not going to get any better. Right. There ain't going to be another Stevie Ray. I'm sorry. Right. That's it, done. done. And Don Bag to me was that it, in metal. Right. That's it. It's finished. With Raymond and Randy Rhodes, what else are you going to do? Right. It's beautiful, man. They made their stamp. Uh, heart and soul, man, goes a long way, man. Yeah. So anyway, I made a short story long for you. <laughs> that's okay. But that's how it's all good. we actually all met at the same time. So, okay. And, um, you know, the nights we were there, I jammed with Don Bag, and he had a uh, clean guitar for the hollow. So, Rita, I love you, and I love Rita. She came to our New York show, and somewhere, either her or Vinny, whoever's got Dime's vault of, you know, four-track right. file stakes tapes, we jammed together. And Don Bag recorded it. You're on those tapes? Oh, absolutely. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, when, when oh, we, yeah. Sweet. Yeah. We did a we clean guitar part to Hollow. He ripped the solo. I ripped the solo. He ripped the third solo. I ripped the last solo and did this harmonic shit. Yeah. That I learned from Eric Johnson. That comes from Austin Cad. That comes from a jazz style, whatever. Yeah. So now, I mean, now, okay. Uh, the the record came out this year. Walk Through Exits Only, the debut solo uh, CD from Phil Anselmo and the Illegals. 
You guys have been playing shows. What have the shows been like? Man, we've it, um, in all aspects, it's been a very, very, very fucking a religious experience, man. I mean, it's been a moving force, man. It built momentum and it gained momentum all the way till its end, which was, um, I forget, in Louisiana. And uh, we were very well received. There was a lot of love and whatever rumor this and that may have been. I think we pretty much put it to rest on that stage. Right. And that's what we came to do. We're not rock stars and he's not out to prove anything. Right. So how do you how do you do something that's new? How do you do something new in a genre which is just absolutely wonderful and there's different subgenres of it, but how do you overall pay homage to from black metal to just old school metal right, right. to anything to Sabbath to Doom to anything to Sludge? How do you do homage to that? Well, you write a record like Walk Through Exits Only and you don't overproduce it and you do what you do with it and let the songs speak for themselves. Right, right. I think as time goes, and people really, really open up to it, and they open it up and read his lyrics and what he's saying, and our delivery as a band. I, I think it'll stand the test of time, you know. And they say you live off your new tunes, so I'm loving these two songs on the EP. Yeah, they, yeah. We're gonna talk about that. I, I, uh, I saw tonight uh, Walk the Exits Only. Of course, I have the CD, but I saw the vinyl tonight, and I was very thankful to my man Mark. He, he, uh, yeah. he grabbed me a copy. And it's a beautiful yeah. thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. You all, you signed it for me. I got, it's it's going to go up in the Metalworks room. Yeah, so it's beautiful. Yeah, so, man, the, the two songs on AP are far cry from uh, what's on... Uh, haven't heard it yet. Exactly. And then, you know, the two songs that were on the War Beast yeah. split, they were different than Walk Through Exits. Only these two are quite different. And then I can guarantee How you... How are they different? It's hard to explain. Okay. Pigs kissing... Like, like, you know, pigs you know, kissing pigs. For instance, that particular song is epic. It's uh, what we do as a whole, and it captures a lot of us in right. one song. Right. It's it's tough to do that. It's really tough because if you you know all of our songs are completely different, one from another. This motherfucker catches a lot in one song. We got away with a lot of feelings, okay. a lot of turnaround, a lot of emotions being put on this one. A lot of different avenues, a lot of. A lot of, lot of different ones in one song. And um, Ugly Mug, the one, the opener, I believe it's the opener. Again, another one, man, quite different than anything else we've done. It will be played tomorrow night. Cool, cool. Um, so as we kind of look ahead uh, for the band, what, what do you guys, do you guys have any plans for 2014? Do you know of right now? Tentatively, we are touring West Coast in around the beginning of the year and then Europe in spring and hopefully South America by the time yeah. summer rolls around hopefully cool. yeah it's all tentatively hopefully we'll see what happens uh, obviously Philip has down and uh, we'll see how our you know scheduling works and l we'll see what happens but last time we did get together we had a creative evening where I had written a few riffs and uh, we sat together Philip's a great arranger he took the riffs and screwed around with a couple. We came out with a couple of songs, man, about wow. a song and a half of, cool. you know, and then there's more to come on the sophomore attempt. So this is all going for the sophomore attempt. Oh, okay. So there will be another record by us, and it will be different than Walk Through Exits Only. I don't talk down, or uh, there's no way to talk it down. It is what it is, but we're kind of like only scratch the surface with that guy. So our sophomore attempt is going to fucking lay to waste a lot of other things that we didn't get to the first time around. Right. It's going to be crazy, man. Let's let's take this opportunity now uh, to switch gears and let's talk about Marzi, the man, the Marzi. I mean, like I said when we started this interview, I've known about you for a long time, way before all of this Phil Ensemble stuff happened. Um, I know that uh, you're a very accomplished guitarist and a lot of people in the Houston area know that. I knew about it in San Antonio, and then um, you know I think I kind of got disconnected. And I didn't hear uh, anything about Marzi until this Phil on some old thing. So for some of the people out there, maybe tonight who are hearing about you for the first time, who are saying like, obviously if Phil chose this dude to be the guitar player, his solo band, he, 
he must know something that maybe I don't. So share for the, with the people out there who don't know about Margie, you know, about, you know, your, your history, your musical history, you know, the type of guitarist you are, et cetera, et cetera. It's hard to explain certain aspects of my playing, man. And it's like a lot of it has to do with being brought up in Texas. Um, some things you can't eat, like in a sandwich and get it. You can't drink it, like Stevie Ray said. Something in the air, man. There's a passion, something within the blood that drives you without doubt to fulfill a certain dharma, you know? Um, and I've always had that. I've always recognized it heavily in the boys in Pantera, almost to an envious point where they had such a bond, man. They would go play Joe's Garage, Philip would come back like a football player and say, let's go do this and then that. I never had that bond quite. I did have it in Super Joint for a part, but I didn't have that bond in Texas much with a lot of people. I did start my own band, a three piece called Heaviest Texas. And it's a southern metal band. It's quite different than what we do with Philip. With Philip, it's kind of like difficult, you know. Yeah. And there's a lot of time changes, and we explore. We're, you know, we're writing songs differently. Heaviest Texas is kind of more like a Skinner, Almond Brothers, and a, and Sabbath. You know, you just cannot leave Sabbath out of anything. Yeah, right. So it has it has its southern sound, and I sing in it and. Uh, I believe Steve Taylor, uh, our bass player from the Illegals, probably is going to join the band. He's a good vocalist. And we'll see what happens. So we might do dual vocals on that. We're going to keep it three-piece. We might add a keyboard player into that. That's a completely different thing. Oh, yeah. We are saying something and murdering something else. With that, I kind of indulge in the guitar playing a little bit more. You know, there's pieces we do where I can actually step out and play guitar. You know, like, again, indulge in it a little bit more and uh, play, kind of appeal to that kind of audience. Um, this is more we're straightforward delivering what Philip is saying yeah. we're backing that when we strongly believe in it heaviest Texas I might change the name of the band by the way that band is going to be groove oriented okay. it's uh, quite simple compared to what we're doing with Philip well that's I think that's one of the great things about you is that you you're not just a metal guitar player you you're a guitar player you do you're a kind of a, a master of, of many genres I don't know about the master part but I mean you know I dabbled with a lot of it in yeah. fact I wouldn't consider my, myself a master of any particular genre but jack of all trades and the master of none <laughs> and master of none. I hey. love music brother sure. and I really can't tell you I, I mean in words in, in so many words how much I love it yeah. I truly love it above and beyond anything else that goes along with it the friends and the music and the bus and this and whatever goes along with it. above and beyond all that I spend time alone with my guitar I learn from it and then I try to learn also and learn it enough to for it to soak in so I can give it back so I can give it back honestly in a truthful way you know what I mean it has to it has to brew inside of you with passion and love otherwise you're jerking off the audience and it's not fair to anybody we could have done a fucking Pantera 3 record two whatever the fuck it called you know we could have done that like the, all these other bands are mil milking Pantera riffs right. and they're making a living out of it because there's been an absence for Pantera right yeah. there's been an absence for it so these bands are ripping off Slayer and ripping off Pantera exclusively you can tell yeah. and they've been making a living off of it yeah. we could have fucking done that he's the lead vocalist for right, Pantera right, right. we decided to get, do what you're supposed to do right. elevate you graduate to the next level right. our next record will be exactly that Next level, man. So you grow as a human being, you know. That's awesome, bro. I'm glad. I'm so glad that you, you say that. People get fucked heavily, and musicians do it to their audiences, and it's time to really stop that and spread love as opposed to fucking going. It's either greed or love, man. And we're here fucking because we love it. You're here because you've loved it. I am. I'm here in Austin, and uh, I think that speaks to, really, the the band's integrity as human beings, as musicians, as everything. And you know, me, Blue, Steve Taylor, yeah. and Philip, man. Honestly, man, we, we are what we are, you know? Tomorrow night when you see us, we don't wear no fucking constant. We all love each other. We just finished our first tour together. And I tell you, man, within the whole crew, we had a big crew. The bond between us four heavily got tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter. Yeah. We have a huddle before we hit the stage. We do get together at, like a team because we are a team, man. You know, I do all these things that I do on my own, Rob, but I'll be honest with you, I bring 25% of that. That's it. I may be 5,000% myself, but in the end, I'm only a quarter of that band. I'm bringing my arm and that's it. And everybody else does their thing. Blue is an incredible drummer. It's an honor to play with him. 
It's an honor to play with Steve Taylor, such a seasoned man, all around. Quiet. We call him Shylan Steve Taylor. He's awesome. <laughs> and then the man himself, you know, yeah, yeah, Philip. Yeah. You know, I've known Philip for a long time prior to his fame and success, and I've always admired him awesome. and his talent. And I've always loved the way he portrayed and said things that we all think about, but poetically, he took the time to actually, in a metal groove, give it to us in Pantera. Right. And then down, and then Christ in Version, and then all his other bands. Everything, almost everything he's touched. Everything he's touched. Everything he's touched is good. You know, everything we do in the studio, my brother, let me tell you, we kill ego in the morning. When we get up, we kill the ego, we go down and we work. We work. There's not a note added or taken off that's too many or too less. We do what the song asks for. You, you said it, I bust my ass, I could like show my guitar skills. But it's kind of, again, jerking the people off. Yeah. You play for, you, you take Usurper's Bastard Rant, for instance. That, the lead starts off, dude, it's the ugliest thing you've ever heard. But my brother, it ain't all arpeggios and speed and fast and this and that flashiness. You know why? Because you always not that pretty dude that gets out of the shower or a pretty lady that gets out of the shower done with the makeup, no. The honest truth is that you fall down, you feel horrible sometimes. I try to portray that in a guitar solo. Usurper's bastard rant. You fall down, you get down. It comes. Yeah, it comes up. It, it's triumphant in the end, but initially it goes down, man. It goes down, and I wanted to capture that. You know, being a guitar player that everybody expected me to be doing all these flashy things, I wanted to go right after something that was absolutely horrendous and ugly. As an artist, you know, it, the song asked for it. So I did that, and um, that's that calls killing your ego. Yeah. It's not me going watch what I can do. It's like I don't really care about that. In the end, that song is going to stand the right. test of time. I want to have done it justice. Well, I think you've definitely accomplished that with the with the new Phil on Summer release. So, Marzi, it's been my pleasure, sir. Pleasure's all mine, brother. Give it was good to see Good to see you. I know that I will see you again in 2014. Absolutely, absolutely. With my own uh, solo band and with Philip. Okay. Philip solo band and Marzi solo. Band. Yeah. You know if you're in. No, no. If, if you. Oh shit! <laughs> oh no! Scary. Round two. Oh shit! Talk about a monster, bro. Oh uh, God! You should have seen the little exchange earlier uh, this afternoon or this evening. Uh, it was crazy. Let's not get into that. <laughs> Marzi's here. You're here. We're it's all on tape. We're still here at the House Core Horror Film Festival Year One. We're having lots of fun. Too many Lone Stars. Drinking more water and we're not. <laughs> and we still have to drive back to the Alamo City. Yeah, I have to drive back to Louisiana, bitch. Holy Shinto. Not tonight. Uh, uh, no. not tonight, sir. Which is a good thing, yes. Yes, no. we want more Goat Horse Shows. See no. what happens? No. Montez is a shot of white silver tequila with a dash of lime. People call it different things. Oh God, there he goes. We're about to get into some Montezeri's revenge. Remember everybody, we're here at the Hospital Horror Film Festival. This is Rob from the Metalworks. We'll see you soon.